Men lie, women lie, but numbers don't lie. Hello everybody, I'm gonna make this video quick. Thank you for hitting play for the thousand of you or so that watch my videos, I appreciate the play. Sorry for the gaming headset that I have on, it's the best audio recording equipment that I have. The graphics in this are not going to be the best. Adobe After Effects wants me to pay them a monthly subscription just to use their software and I am not doing that. So I made this video because every year, national news media makes a publication. It's the most dangerous cities list in the U.S. Usually it's 10 cities or the top 25 cities. And every time I read the comments section, I see a bunch of comments clearly showing that people have no idea how these lists are made, where the numbers come from, why their city is on the list, or why their city isn't on the list. Well, I'm going to explain to you why your city is on the list or why it's not on the list, where these rates come from, how they're rated, and how these lists are made, and why some cities should be on the list, but might not show up. So the best example I can give, this is the easiest example I can think of. Think of a small house right next to a big building. Inside of the small house, you have 10 people. And inside this small house, five of those people are the victim of a homicide. Right next door, you have a big building. Inside of the big building, you have 100 people. Inside of that building, 20 people are the victim of a homicide. Now, if I ask the average American, which one is more dangerous, the big building or the small house, because people don't understand crime rates, they usually think the bigger number is the more dangerous city. So usually people answer 20. The big building is more dangerous because there's 20 people getting victimized by homicide versus the small house, which only has five. The problem is that is wrong. In actuality, the small house is more dangerous because if you're one of the people inside of the small house, you have a 50% chance of becoming a victim of a homicide. Versus if you're one of the people in the big building, you only have a 20% chance of being a victim of a homicide. So therefore, the small house is actually more dangerous than the big building. The small house represents cities like Flint, Michigan, Camden, New Jersey, and Gary, Indiana. The big building represents cities like New York City, Los Angeles, and believe it or not, yes, even Chicago. Now, you're probably asking about Compton, California. The reason I didn't put Compton, California in is because Compton, California's murder rate has been steadily decreasing since the late 80s and early 90s. The reason why you always see Chicago in the news is because out of the major cities, which I consider to be a million or more, Chicago has the highest rate. If you were to compare Chicago against LA, New York City, Toronto, and London, Chicago would be the most dangerous, followed by Los Angeles, then New York City, than Toronto, than London, per 100,000. People also get raw numbers and rates confused. The raw number is the actual number of crimes. The rate is the percentage or the ratio or the likelihood that you will become a victim of a crime in the population or the city that you live in. For example, let's say you have two cities. Let's say city one has 100 homicides. Let's say city two has 100 homicides. Now, if you don't understand crime rates, most people will think, well, they're equally dangerous because they're both the same raw number because the 100 is the raw number. However, let's say city one has 100,000 people and let's say city two has a million people. City one is actually more dangerous than city two because city one has a much higher rate of homicide than city two. People in city one have a much higher chance of becoming a victim of a homicide than in city two because of the, of the overall population. In this scenario, city one represents the city of Detroit. City two in this scenario is representative of the city of Los Angeles. In 2020, there were 328 homicides in the city of Detroit. In 2020, there were 351 homicides inside the city of Los Angeles. The city of Detroit has an overall population of 674,000 people. However, the total population for the city of Los Angeles is 3.967 million. So even though Detroit and Los Angeles both have about the same raw number of homicides, Detroit is much more dangerous because the population, the overall population is much lower than the city of Los Angeles. So therefore, if you're in Detroit, you have a much higher percentage of becoming a victim of a homicide than you do if you're living in the city of Los Angeles. That's what makes it more dangerous. A lot of people from the big cities are probably yelling at the screen, well, what about the most dangerous neighborhoods list? The most dangerous neighborhoods list breaks those big cities and small cities up into specific neighborhoods. What you'll notice is that in most cities, the majority of the homicides occur in certain neighborhoods. One of Chicago's most dangerous neighborhoods is Englewood. 
not to be confused with Inglewood in Los Angeles, which also has a high murder rate. So what do you think? Do you think that the overall city's list is a good indicator of crime? Or do you think that the neighborhood's list is a good indicator of crime? Please comment in the comment section below. Thank you to anybody that actually clicked on this video and watched. I appreciate it. See you later.